Dear colleagues, welcome to this hematology roundup from ECAP 24. We have focused on hematological malignancies from four abstracts presented on June 15, 2024. The first presentation was abstract S100, the phase three study results of izituximab, pertezomib, lenalidomide, and dexamethasone versus VRD for transplant ineligible patients with newly diagnosed multiple myeloma presented by Dr. Facone. This trial presentation had a concomitant publication in the New England Journal of Medicine at ASCO 24 last week. This international phase three trial evaluated the efficacy of adding anti-CD38 monoclonal antibody izituximab to the standard VRD regimen for tezomib, lenalidomide, and dexamethasone for newly diagnosed multiple myeloma patients ineligible for transplantation. The study enrolled a total of 446 patients randomized to a 3 to 2 ratio to receive either isotuximab VRD or VRD alone. At a median follow-up of 59.7 months, the isotuximab VRD group demonstrated significantly improved progression-free survival compared to the VRD group, with an estimated rates of 60 months at 63.2% versus 45.2%. It was seen that the addition of izituximab increased the percentage of patients achieving a complete response or better and significantly enhanced the rate of minimal residual disease negativity in those with a complete response. The safety profile of izituximab VRD was comparable to VRD alone with no new safety signals observed. The incidence of serious adverse events and those leading to treatment discontinuation were similar between the two groups. These findings suggest that izituximab VRD represents a more effective initial therapy option for patients aged 18 to 80 with newly diagnosed multiple myeloma who are ineligible for transplantation, potentially setting a new standard of care in this patient population. We move on to abstract S101, the landscape of TP53 mutations and their prognostic impact in chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Somatic TP53 mutations are common in chronic lymphocytic leukemia, often leading to poor response to treatment and reduced survival. This study aimed to detail the landscape of TP53 mutations in CLL and assess their prognostic impact across various clinical trials, considering genetic risk factors and treatment types. DNA sequencing of 10,051 patients revealed diverse TP53 mutations with those in the DNA binding domain and certain other mutations linked to significantly worse progression-free survival and overall survival. The study found that minor TP53 mutations and the number of mutations per patient influenced survival. Furthermore, TP53 mutations resulted in shorter PFS and OS across both chemoimmunotherapy and targeted treatments, though the impact was less pronounced with targeted agents. This comprehensive analysis underscores a significant prognostic role of TP53 mutations in CLL. The third presentation was abstract S102. The Apollo trial aimed to compare efficacy of a combination of all transretinoic acid atra and arsenic trioxide ATO versus a standard atra chemotherapy regimen in high-risk acute promyelocytic leukemia, HRAPL. This open-label randomized phase 3 study included patients aged 18 to 65 with newly diagnosed HRAPL. The trial showed that the atra ATA regimen led to superior event-free survival at two years compared to the conventional atra chemotherapy approach. Although the trial was prematurely discontinued due to the slow recruitment and drug expiration, the results indicate that the atra ATA combination could become the new standard of care for HRAPL, demonstrating better disease control with fewer molecular relapses and comparable overall survival rates. The fourth presentation was the abstract S103. Assimilant provides superior efficacy and excellent safety and tolerability versus tyrosine kinase inhibitors in newly diagnosed chronic myeloid leukemia in the pitbull ask for first study. Chronic myeloid leukemia necessitates long-term treatment, emphasizing the importance of therapies that enhance efficacy while maintaining safety and tolerability. Asimenib, the first BCR-ABL1 inhibitor targeting the ABL meristal pocket, aims to achieve these goals. The ask for first trial compared asimenib to standard-of-care tyrosine kinase inhibitors in newly diagnosed CML patients. The trial's primary endpoints were met showing superior major molecular response rates at 48 weeks for asimenib 
compared to investigators selected TKIs, included imatinib and second-generation TKIs. Asimitinib achieved higher rates of early and deep molecular response and exhibited favorable safety profile with fewer adverse events leading to discontinuation or dose modification. This suggests that asimitinib not only enhances efficacy, but also improves the potential for treatment-free remission, positioning it as a promising first-line treatment for CML. The final presentation was late-breaking abstract 3438, the Starglow trial. This was a global randomized phase three study which evaluated the efficacy and safety of glufatinumab plus gemcitabine and oxaloplatin versus rituximab plus gemox in patients with relapsed refractory diffuse large B-cell lymphoma after at least one prior therapy. Glufatinumab, a CD20, CD3 bispecific antibody, was previously shown to be well tolerated and effective as a monotherapy. In this trial, 274 patients were randomized to receive either glofit gamox or r gamox. The primary endpoint overall survival showed a significant benefit for glofit gamox with a hazard ratio of 0.59 and median OS not reach compared to nine months for r gamox. Secondary endpoints, including progression free survival and complete remission rate, also favored glofit gamox. After a median follow-up of 20.7 months, glofit gemox continued to show superior outcomes in OS, PFS, and CR rates. Adverse events were more common in the glofit gemox group, but were consistent with known risks. Glofitimab is the first CD20, CD3 bispecific antibody to demonstrate a survival benefit in randomized phase 3 trial for diffuse large B-cell lymphoma.